Hey everyone, Josh here. So today we're doing a video that I've wanted to do for quite a while, and that's going to be figuring out what is the best tune for common rails, specifically the CJAA here in North America. A few years ago, I've done a tune on a CKRA Passat, and then last summer I did it on a CJAA sports wagon using the Powergate V3 with using MR Tuning as the tuning company. But recently, you'll notice I've been using Tunezilla or Malone with my YCJAA and the DSG tuning. So we're doing a comparison between the two, and it's something I've wanted to do for quite a while. I just haven't had the logistics. I don't live in a populated area, so trying to find multiple TDIs that are, say, DSGs, tuned, same weight, that kind of stuff. It wasn't really a very good comparison. But now Tunezilla has made this possible to do it on the same car. So that's where this disclaimer is going to come in. So I have bought the MR tuning package, 55 horse and 25 horse, the stage two tune through them out of my pocket. Whereas the Tunezilla with the flashes of the Pro, the tune credits and a little goodie package was all sent to me free of charge. So I am not being paid to say one way or the other what I think is better but there is a bit of a financial difference between the two, I would say. The other thing is I've also got a discount code if you decide to go with Tunezilla. So that'll be down in the description, but this is going to be an unbiased, or as unbiased as I can be, comparison between these two. So I've got the 25 horse and the 55 horse tune stage two. So these companies do a little bit different. And then Tunezilla is, I've got the 0.5, and the stage two. So we're gonna go over some differences here and how I'm gonna decide or compare them what I think is the best. So with that being said, I feel like everybody's got their own opinions on what's best when it comes to the tune. So personally, like for my wife, the reason we tuned it was she wanted it more reliable and she wanted more power. Why I kind of wanted it tuned was I wanted it a bit better on fuel efficiency because it seems like every time I get into one of her cars, it's always on empty, so <laughs> the better fuel mileage, less chance that I have to jump it in and empty and throw 20 bucks in to drive into town. So what we're tuning here today, so we're gonna do, the first thing's gonna be obviously fuel efficiency, that's why you're driving a TDI. Second one's going to be power or torque gain. And then the third comparison's kinda gonna be the customer experience, customer support, um, especially if you aren't really familiar with tuning a TDI, kinda that aspect's somewhat important, so. We'll go over the customer experience and the buying part right now. Okay, so we're gonna look at these websites because they've got things laid out a little bit different between these two companies and as well as the flashing devices. So through MR Tuning, I'm not gonna go really deep into detail, but so we've got the, basically the different tunes. So stage one's missions intact only, and then you have stage two package, which is economy tune, a smoke tune, 25 horse, 55 horse, and switch on the fly. So switch on the fly, I think MR Tuning is the only company that does that. And with the DSG, drive will be 25 horse and sport will be 55 horse. My personal opinion, just run the 55 horse tune. Just run the highest for your hardware, is my opinion. So then you can also get DSG tuning and then you get your exhaust pipe kit and then the flashing device is included in that price. You can do the ECU and the DSG through the power gate, this device. This device works really good, but the touchscreen is a little glitchy, or at least it is for me. I don't think it's the most intuitive, but it works, does what it's supposed to do. The other plus is you don't have to have a DSG tune for 25 horse or the 55 horse tune. You can run it stock DSG tune, um, but I do think the tune is really makes it a lot more enjoyable to drive is my personal opinion. So website, He's updated it really good since I used it last because before you'd have to, he would send you a PayPal request. You send him the money, he sends the goods and then you have to email a tune to him and then he would physically modify the file, send back to you. So you'd be out of a tune for a few days, which isn't the biggest deal if you plan ahead. But sometimes with, especially with the CKRAs, you can get stuck with a no start. So that was kind of a downside. But now that he's gone to a tune creator or an Instatune, it's definitely a lot nicer so yeah pay through paypal and he's got all these instructions down here on how to use it the different programs you need to download all that like it's all laid out really nice really simple to use so then we're going to switch to tunezilla so we've got when i did the tunezilla video i did 0.5 and stage two so 0.5 is the highest you can go without dsg tuning and then stage two is the highest you can go 
with DSG tuning, but stock turbo. So again, they laid out really nice here, everything you need to do. And then, so they can do stage 0.5 through four, all emissions intact. And then if you want to do a delete tune, you go down here and you start selecting the stuff that you want to do. So it's again, it's laid out really nice. Uh, one thing is, is the flashing device isn't included in the price. So you have to buy that separate. And if you're doing it, I would definitely recommend the Flash Zilla Pro because it's not VIN locked. So you can do it on all your common rail buddies cars. And the other thing is, is TuneZilla can't do a DSG tune through their Flash Zilla V3. They can only do it through this Pro tool. So if you're using Flash Zilla, definitely get the Pro tool. So then up next, we'll do kind of the contacting them as well as their um, dealers. So MR Tuning, you'd usually email Martin directly. Uh, you usually get a reply back it within the day or within a couple days. Uh, TuneZilla, you can open up a ticket and then they usually get it back to you that same day. And then as far as dealers, uh, MR Tuning, not so much. Most of them are in Quebec, except for Eco Diesel owners and they're in Alberta. So um, if you're not comfortable doing this at home, you don't have as much of an option. Whereas TuneZilla, you've got dealers every which way so you can just it comes up with wherever you live and then it'll tell you where your closest ones are so i would say maybe that aftermarket support where you can want to talk to a dealer take it there to get it done um Denzel might be a little bit better on that aspect but the stuff's really simple to be doing at home as well so. okay so we're going to compare these four tunes here now so the two ways we're going to do the fuel mileage and the basically the power torque gain uh, first off, fuel mileage, so I'm going to fill it right to the brim. It already is filled to the brim, but I'm going to double check it in the driveway here with the jerry can. Uh, do the drive loop, which is about 75 kilometers, and then uh, fill it right full again with the jerry can and measure the fuel used with the refrigerant scale. Uh, it's pretty accurate, and then you can just figure out weight to liters and figure how much you used. Um, I think it works pretty good. It's not the not 100%. It's not like I'm driving a thousand kilometers or anything like that, but drive through town, country, all that good stuff. Um, and then as far as power gains, we're gonna run a draggy. We're gonna do zero to 100, and then probably a 20 to 100 roll and just measure the time it takes. So do that for all four tunes, and then we should have a rough idea and see power gains, fuel mileage, and see uh, which one is on top for that. Okay, so first we're gonna do the 0.5 TuneZilla tune on here first, so it's stage two right now. So I'm gonna flash back to the 0.5. Uh, of course it's raining, so now I'm hoping the roads kind of dry up a little bit here before we get back into the stage twos here again, but it is what it is. So if I click on that, flash selected file. I'm gonna let it do its thing. I'm gonna to top up the fuel tank and then we're gonna go for a drive. Okay, so we're gonna do our 10 to, or 20 to 110. So I'm in sport mode. I'm just gonna mat it here at 10 kilometers an hour and it's just gonna drag you. 60. Here we're gonna launch at, oh, traction control off. We're gonna launch at 2,000 RPM, I think. And we're gonna try 1,500, see if that's any better so it doesn't slip as much. <laughs> I don't think that helped much. All right, and we're back. So I'm cutting it a little bit short. So we're doing 52.3. So I'm gonna just reset the trip and then average, like when I'm checking the fuel mileage at the end. The reason I'm cutting it a little bit short is the sun's gone down. I'm kind of afraid the ice is, the road's gonna start kind of icing over. So I wanted them all to kind of be above freezing. So we're gonna get the stage two put on and we're gonna do the exact same driving, exact same launches, all that good stuff. So I think tires are definitely a limiting factor and that's why I'm doing that 20 to 110 pull as well. It doesn't slip during that so we can get a good torque kind of feel. But then yeah, the, you could see that launching at 2000 versus 1500 made a difference. So we're definitely tire and road limited here. So now as far as getting accurate fuel measurement, 
So, got my refrigerations, refrigerant scale. Put the full jerry can on there. And then zero. And then we'll go fill the thing up. So we fill it right up to the brim there. And then we just go back and remeasure this. And then just be to remeasure, 5.14 pounds to drive 52.3 kilometers. So we'll do a conversion here at the end and we'll see how they all do. Okay, so we got everything reset here again. We've got the stage two with all some, some little goodies on there flashed on there. So now we're gonna go for a drive and do the same thing all over again. All right, so now we're doing the stage two Tunzilla. We're gonna do that the 20 to 110 here again. So we're going to do the 2000 launch here. 60. 100. And here's the 1500. 100. Okay, and we're back. So that's the end of the stage two with the Tunzilla. So we're gonna get this thing flashed back to stock and then switch to MR tuning. So while we're doing that, we'll check the mileage. So I think that's about the same as what I read before. Um, but I did notice it was dipping down. Like I saw 4.7, 4.6 before I did all the pulls and stuff. So I think if you hyper miled it, I think the stage two was getting better mileage. But then once you start using the power, you're gonna start using the fuel. All right, so we are back to stock. So now we can use the power gate to get the MR tuning on. Let it think here for a minute. So tuning, continue with writing of the file, yes. So then we've got 25 and 55. So we're gonna put the 25 on. Again, we'll let it think for a minute here. So it kind of sucks when you're switching between, when you're switching between companies, you have to um, flash back to stock and then put the tune on. So the 10, 15 minutes that it takes to flash from either of these companies between tunes, you have to do that 15 minutes and then you'll be another 15 minutes putting the other company's tune on. So takes a bit of time. All right, so we're back at it here today. So we've got the stage two 25 horse MR tuning on. Um, it's the following morning, so the roads kind of got a little bit wet last night and it ran out of time. So it's a little bit cooler here now. It's one degree versus last night, it's about five or six. So a little bit of a difference, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna say the 25 horse tune, you can feel it doesn't have quite as much bottom end get up and go. But I would say kind of like cruising and stuff, it seems somewhat similar. Um, but we're gonna do the 20 to 110 roll here in a few minutes and then uh, we'll do the zero to 100. Okay, so here we're gonna do the pull. We're in sport mode. Okay, we're gonna try the 2000 RPM launch here. Got traction control off. Here we go. And sport mode. There we go. All right, now we're going to try the fifteen hundred. So we're back so we're gonna flash the stage two on here now fill it up and go for a drive uh one thing i did notice was the consumption it did read higher consistently this time around and well 5.4 isn't far off of what it was reading before at 5.3 so we'll get some fuel in here and see if it's actually a little bit worse on fuel or if that's just the 
consumption monitor. All right, so here we're gonna do the stage two. DSG was not happy on that last one, but we'll try launching it here now. So we're back here now so that's the best consumption we've seen on the screen at least so we're gonna get some diesel in there see if that's actually true and then um i think i've got a bit of a flaw to the test here we'll go over in a minute so the issue we have is when we're measuring diesel we've got our four runs here so we got 5.1 5.4 then we got a six and then a 4.9 so this one was the MR tuning stage two 25 horse tune and then the, I think the issue with that was that was my first run this morning at 5 30 uh, car was cold so I think we had heating used a bit more fuel while it was warming up so I think it's a bit of a flawed test here so we're gonna run that again so it takes about 45 minutes and I think I've got enough diesel to do it so we'll do that just so these are accurate So we got some numbers here so let's go over kind of the pros and cons between both of these companies here first and then uh, we'll go to looking at some logging as far as uh, where the magic happens as far as the two companies so for customer support i don't think you're going to be able to beat the flashzilla the tunezilla the ticket system a lot bigger company of yeah a lot of people to get a hold of as well as the dealer support i don't think you can beat that. So I'm going to say Toonzilla for the customer support. Uh, the flash device, so that's a bit interesting. So I like the maneuverability and the size of the PowerGate V3, but I don't like the touch screen. So I don't know if it's just me, but I can hit the button like multiple times. Sometimes it works flawless, and other times you have to click the button three or four times before it registers that you clicked on the arrow or something like that. So yeah, the PowerGate has its pros and the cons. And then the Flashzilla Pro, um, you have to use your laptop so that it's a bit more bulky, but you can just throw it in the passenger seat and you're good. Um, but I do like the kind of the everything's web based. It's all just done quick and easy. You're not transferring files here and there. And the other thing would be it's not VIN locked. So that would be my other favorite thing that you don't have to worry about. It's just you've got your little package and tune as many cars as you want. So I would say that's a bit of a toss up between the two. And then price, so I don't think the, the you can really beat the MR tuning, especially when you get the kit with the flow direct pipe. I think like dollar to horsepower, I think the MR tuning is definitely up there. So yeah, I would say the MR tuning is Brett is more economically friendly. Um, but up next, so we're gonna do the speed and then fuel consumption so up first so the 20 to 110 i think is the most accurate way to kind of do it we didn't have wheel slip or very little wheel slip and i think it has a pretty good indication on how these two tunes or two companies kind of had it set up so on the lesser horsepower one so the mr tuning was 9.19 and the tunezilla 0.5 was 9.23 so they're very very close but i'm going to say the mr tuning it feels like you got a lot more grunt off the line kind of like from the zero to well 60 i know it doesn't show here but we had wheel slip the slipping um we're using stock winter tires with less than ideal road surfaces or track surfaces um, i think we had some sticky tires i think these numbers would look a little bit different but yeah i would say the mr tuning has a little bit more grunt very bottom end but then the tunezilla i think both of them are kind of top end are pretty close that's kind of how it felt um, even if you look at the lower RPM launch, like kind of played out the same, but they are still, the MR tuning just a little bit quicker. So that's 
I would say them are tuning on paper and in real life. I'd say it's a bit quicker than Tunezilla. And then we go to the larger, the higher horsepower ones. So the 55 horsepower versus the stage two. So again, I would say the MR tuning has got a lot more grunt at the bottom end. We're gonna have a lot more wheel slip, but once everything's kind of rolling, I feel like they felt pretty similar. So you can kind of see that 20 to 110. They aren't too far off. We go to the launching. So 2000 RPM was too much for the winter tires. Like you can see a nice two tires, probably 15, 20 feet, like black marks of just wheel slips. So I think if we had better tires, these numbers would be different, but the lower RPM launch, you can see zero to 60, it's a little bit quicker and then the zero to hundred fair bit quicker. Um, but yeah, I, I think they are closer than what they look like on paper is my thought on that. They it definitely, both the MR tuning tunes have got more bottom end it felt, but once you're rolling, I think they're pretty similar. Uh, we go to fuel consumption. So this is a somewhat flawed test. So 52 kilometers is a really short test. Uh, it's mostly country road with a little bit of town driving. Um, I did know the Tunzilla, the stage two, I did get stuck at a stoplight and another stop sign a little bit longer than the rest of them. So I think that kind of hurt it a little bit because we're talking well, 0.3 liters difference here. So I think long term, I'm going to say that they're all four tunes are going to be very close. And um, I was actually thinking, so we might be going to Florida here in the next couple months. So I might run the one tune on the way down and the one tune on the way back. So we're looking at, I don't know if it's 2000 or 2,500 kilometers one way. So we could get a decent long-term test and see if they are similar. Um, but I'm gonna go back, circle around here again and say, get the highest horsepower tune for your hardware. I think they're going to be very similar. Um, even here, the MR tuning, the 55 horse was the best out of all of them, even on my short-term tests. So. Yeah, I think that's, uh, I kind of figured that's how it was going to be. If you're not using the horsepower, but they're gonna be close, but if you're gonna be launching it every stop sign and doing a cannonball run across the country, I feel, think the 55 horse tune might use a bit more fuel because you're obviously using that power, but if you're driving it sensible, I think they're all gonna be very similar. So that's that. So we're gonna go over some logging here yet. We're gonna go out and do some more tests and then uh, we're gonna go on the tunes of the log viewer and see where the magic happens. Okay, so fuel mileage and power isn't what you're after, but you're wanting reliability or longevity, simplicity. I guess all of that kind of ties in together. So we've got a few things that I'm kind of wanting to look at and see what the magic is between the two. Um, so we're going to run the higher horsepower tunes from both companies and we're going to do some logging with BCDS. And then we're going to check on the tunes of the log viewer and see, kind of compare the two and see where the magic happens. So we got three things I am kind of concerned about, not concerned, but two, three things I want to look at. So the very first one is going to be the CJAA. The CP4s aren't known to be the strongest. They can sometimes fail and send shrapnel through your entire fuel system. Everything needs to be changed. Um, you can install a CP3 or a disaster prevention kit. Um, I am wanting to install the disaster prevention kit because I have used CP4s around here for, they're free. So if that CP4 ever does fail, I can just throw another one on for free and not think about it versus the thousand dollars or so for the CP3 conversion. So. That might be a future video. I want to compare that because um, higher rail pressure or higher pump output um, is one way to get more fuel in in the same duration or a shorter duration. So I don't imagine higher rail pressure is bad for the pump, but I don't think it's good for the pump either. So I'm just kind of curious on what that's going to read between the two. Uh, the one thing that I am concerned about is going to be boost pressures. So I want to make sure it's a nice ramp up and nice and level. We don't have great big spikes and boost pressure all over the place. So I want to kind of compare the two, see what they look like. Um, the CKRA are known to not have the greatest turbos. The CJAA are apparently better, but I've never done a CKRA turbo, whereas I've done two CJAAs. So that's just kind of on the back of my mind. And then the very last one and probably the biggest concern that I have is going to be thermal management or exhaust gas temperature. When you put a high flow downpipe on, you're removing the three EGT sensors in the downpipe because you don't need them anymore. 
but you're leaving the one in the turbo. So it's measuring the exhaust gas output before the turbo. I know the MR tuning doesn't use it because I've had it plugged into the EGR temperature sensor for the last 10,000 kilometers. Made zero difference. As soon as I flashed to the Tunezilla, code came up. And that's where my last video came up, diagnosed that first off I had it in the wrong plug, second off it was failed and I'm stuck at 930. So the Tunezilla definitely felt derated when that code is active. So I know they're going to cut fueling duration something to kind of try and get that high temperature back down. So if you're towing, doing long grades, like up in the mountains and stuff like that, you're going to want to keep an eye on EGTs, um, a digital out like the an output like you can plug in your obd and kind of watch it it's a good idea but it's also kind of nice to know that the ecu is looking out for you as well and you don't necessarily need to be thinking about that all the time i don't know how big of an issue it is just normal driving so when i took it to the track and did a full pull i think i hit it was the zero to like 150 or so pull um we saw 870 870 celsius which is pretty hot like 1600 degrees fahrenheit um, I don't think I'd want it much hotter than that for sustained periods. So that's just level road or level track, um, no load. So you're not towing or anything like that. So all that stuff is going to make things hotter and worse. So I want to kind of see what the two tunes will do and then, uh, I don't know, see what they do. So I'm going to get the stage two flashed onto it and then go for a drive. All right, so we're out for a nice little drive here now. we got a bit of an interesting issue here with the MR tuning. Um, so we've got fuel pressure and injection quantity. We've got boost pressure specified and actual, which should be nice to see that it's following along nicely. And our issue is going to be EGT. So if you watched the last video, these two over here in the next page that are no longer there, they're going to stay at a fixed 306 or 294. But turbo temperature prior to turbocharger, so that should be reading not minus six. We're not reversing climate change here. We're global warming, so that's definitely, it's just mapped in to read minus six, so there's gonna be no thermal management. Um, so it works good if you have a bad sensor, but if you are, yeah, high load situations, you might be a little concerned about EGTs. And I've got no way to figure out what they are because I'm not plumbing in a, I'm not plumbing in an external one out of like my LH or anything like that, so. We're just gonna check these two, I guess, for now, and uh, we're gonna reflash back to the Tunezilla and see how everything stacks up. Okay, so up next, we're gonna do a log. So we're gonna do the third gear pull, I think. I'm just gonna start about 30 kilometers and then go to the speed limit. So, uh, yeah, nothing rocket science on that. Flash is on, but anyway, so we've got it now unplugged. So now we're going to see if there's any change. As you can see, it's still minus six, so it's not reading anything, so do log and see if any of that other stuff changes third gear pull here as you can see we've got uh, EGT temperature here okay and so now with the Tunezilla with that um, EGT sensor unplugged you get a flash and glow plug light the temperature is stuck at 930 degrees Celsius so I'm gonna imagine we're gonna have some effect to our fueling is my guess so we'll, I'll do another uh, third gear pull we'll log it and we'll compare it Okay, so if you're not familiar with it, Tunezilla has a free logging app, I guess you'd call it. So you can just go to logging and then upload your file. So I use VCDS, nice and simple. Um, I didn't quite log it how I thought I did, but it's going to work. So very first thing we're gonna look at is fuel pressure. Go down, so we just click on that. So that's showing fuel pressure. And this one should show RPM. So we've got the we've got the MR tuning 55 horse with the EGT sensor plugged in. We've got it with it plugged, unplugged. And then we've got the Tunezilla EGT sensor plugged in, EGT sensor unplugged. So looking at them, so red is the fuel pressure in bar. So we hit a high of 1920 bar. And same thing, it's close, close to that 1920. And then the, or the uh, Tunezilla, same thing, 1920, and not quite 1920. So I'm gonna say fuel pressure, they're running them as high as they can. I think the fuel pressure sensor, I think is only rated to 1900 bar. So I think they're 
same thing they're both running very similar fuel pressure so that's kind of a mute point so if you're tuning it it's going to be running the max fuel pressure it can on the pole but obviously when you're driving normally we're down at yeah 330 bar stuff like that so just hard pulls you're going to be maxing out the uh, fuel pressure okay so up next we're going to do this is boost pressure specified and boost pressure actual so this is absolute pressure so we're not actually building 39.49 psi that is with atmospheric pressure built in so that's about 14 psi of atmospheric pressure so realistically you're going to take that number minus 14 psi and that's going to be actual boost so you can see we got requested is 39 and or 36 and a half psi and actual is 39 and a half so it's spiking pretty good um, that might be part of having a worn turbo i don't know how many kilometers is on this turbo so as it wears it's harder to kind of control what's going on um, but again same thing here so you're calling for 36 0.68 and you're seeing 39.84 so it's spiking fairly good and we go to the tunezilla so then they are calling for 38 ps or 35 psi and we're seeing 38 and same thing here calling for 36 we're seeing 38 so it's over boosting but not quite as much is that one and a half psi gonna make a world of difference i don't know but it is what it is. So up next here, we're gonna check EGT sensors or EGT temperature. So as I kind of showed on that video, so the MR tuning is gonna read minus six all the time. And again, with it unplugged, still reading minus six. Then the Tunezilla with it plugged in. So this was a about 1500 RPM to red line basically. So we saw a high of 846 Celsius. So that's on a flat road, as little load, like it's, yeah, there wasn't, I wasn't towing anything like that. So I think if you get into some high load situations, that's gonna be climbing higher there yet. And then when you unplug it for the Tunezilla, it's gonna read 930. So then the next thing that we can look at here is going to be the um, injection quantity because it did something interesting. So I'm gonna get rid of the temperature. So again, so MR tuning, reading 70 milligrams per stroke for the entire pull until about 42, and then starts cut, dripping down. Um, same thing here at, with it unplugged, same thing, running 70, until about that 41 mark, and then it starts cutting fuel. Tunezilla with it plugged in still, same thing, we were reading 70 milligrams until about that 4,100, mark so they're very similar um, and then here with it unplugged so we're seeing 70 for a very brief time and then it's cutting fuel so down to right there so 41 so now we're down to 50 milligrams per stroke so it cut 20 milligrams just because it was getting well it was stuck at a high temperature so obviously if you hit 930 it's cutting fuel pretty quick to try and get things cooled down quickly so that's kind of a nice built-in feature so it's trying to get it back down so you don't melt any pistons or anything like that so i think i think um having egt sensors in there and functional is definitely a nice addition especially if you're going to be towing or doing long mountain passes stuff like that um flat ground i don't think you're gonna have too much of an issue but yeah if you're doing like track days stuff like that then yeah i definitely think you want that the downside with the MR tuning, even if you had a OBD plug-in to be able to monitor temperature, it's stuck at minus six. So even with it plugged in, you're not gonna be able to get a reading off of that sensor. So it is what it is. So if you're too concerned, you have to wire in one after the fact, like a hardwire EGT sensor. Uh, I'll add here too, so the common rail TDI is really only TDIs besides the V10s that had the uh, EGT sensors. So older cars, they never had this thermal management. But yeah, once you started tuning, it was a good idea to get EGT sensors added in. So if you get these big spikes of hot temperature, you know to let off. All right, so let's wrap this video up. So it's long enough here now. So if you watched it all, thanks for watching it. I hope I kind of outlined some pros and cons between the two companies. Uh, my personal opinion is I don't think you're gonna go wrong with either of them. 
Um, they're, I don't think I have any complaints. They both run awesome. Fuel mileage gains, great. And then, yeah, just the power. There's no complaints at all. Uh, one thing I thought about just now is smoke. So obviously you want a nice, clean running car. Um, I didn't have the smoke tune from MR tuning, but I wouldn't use it anyways. But both run nice and clean. You wouldn't know it's tuned by any means. And I think the one, I think the MR tuning might have had a light haze on the launch on the stage two, but other than that, it ran clean. You wouldn't know it was tuned. So uh, I hope this video helps you kind of make up your mind if you're on the fence going one way or the other. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.